is Gamer Homies, your boy Blast Miss H Dizzle. A lot of you guys have been hitting me up because for some reason you guys want to hear more stories about smoke. I don't know what it is that's so attractive about crazy sociopathic f***ing bullies and sh <laughs> The dude honestly looks like Debo from Friday, bald and buff and everything. We just did not have a lazy eye. This story is basically two stories in one. You're welcome. But what I'm gonna need you to do before I tell this story is to hit that like button. It helps give my stories exposure so other can see the f up situations I be getting myself into and or have seen. And just like the title said, this story is f <laughs> Oh, this story's f Okay, Smoke was the name of basically the biggest, toughest, craziest sociopathic bully in that f***ing school, man. Teachers were scared of him, everyone else was scared of him, he was the head of his own gang called the Socias. Yes, I've read the book, what the f*** is it called again, um, The Outsiders, I used to love that f as a kid. I don't know why he named this gang after the same gang in that book, because the dude doesn't pass me as a person who reads that f much. This guy sold drugs, shot at people, you name the type of crime, and this dude had his finger in it some way, shape, and or form. You know how most people's parents always tell them, don't do the stuff that I did, you go to school, get a good education, get a good job, he didn't even have that sh his parents were well-known drug dealers and gangbangers too, and they condoned the shit. You would think that anyone who would be in that rough of a lifestyle as to where is they're putting their life online on a daily basis would want their kid to do the same But they was down! Like, I remember walking past this guy's smoke's house. His whole entire front yard consisted of nothing but weights. Him and his gang would just sit in front of the house all day lifting f***ing weights. Every once in a while you would see his dad come out and do a couple bench presses and squats with him and whatnot. You know, but that's all they did was get into fights at school, sell drugs, get in the gang fights after school, and lift weights in front of their house. That's legitimately all I ever knew Smoke for doing. Now, there was this really pretty chick that used to go to that school. I forgot her name. We're going to call her Crystal. This chick was half Puerto Rican, half black. She was bad as f for a 15-year-old. <laughs> Oh, no pedophile. And everyone in the school had a crush on this chick. What stopped everybody from hollering, including me, was the fact that this chick Crystal had a boyfriend, but her boyfriend did not go to that school. But for some reason, this dude was super f***ing popular, even though the dude was never freaking around Thomas Jefferson. I still remember his name to this day. That's how popular this dude was. His name was Chris. You guys ever run into that person who's just super charismatic with everybody? Like, he was friends with all the gangbangers. The women loved him. And he was friends with all the nerds. Like, the dude was mad cool. Now, the thing that kept everyone from hollering at his girl was the fact that he was also in a gang. I do not remember what the gang was. I'm not just going to cop out and say it was the Latin Kings, because they were huge in Cleveland, Ohio at the time. I don't think it was the Latin Kings, but the dude was Puerto Rican. Now, as we all know, Smoke has a super big head, because he's intimidating everybody at the school. Hell, even the teachers let this dude have his way and don't say sh back when he does jack them. He's the only dude I know at Thomas Jefferson that could get into fights every single fight day and never be suspended because even if they told him he couldn't come to school he still walked up in that bitch and went and lifted weights in gym because the gym teacher and the principal weren't gonna tell him not to come in there because they were scared shitless of the dude now on that day in particular smoke decides to holler at crystal right and when crystal respectfully declines of course smoke being the gangbanger that he is decides to get off thug and gangster and you ain't shit. 
I'll fuck you up. It's blah, 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 starts threatening her and shit. Of course, she's like, oh yeah, for real? Well, I'm gonna call my boyfriend and tell him what you're saying. He ain't gonna be too happy about the shit that you're talking. Of course, Smoke is like, man, fuck your boyfriend. He ain't gonna do shit. Blah, blah, blah. I was there when this argument took place. Fast forward about four more hours into the day. School is letting out, man. I'm walking out with Crystal. As I'm getting outside the front gates, I see a big ass crowd forming up. They used to have a lot of pop locking and break dancing battles at Thomas Jefferson because everyone can dance. Or B, it's a big ass fight. Either which case, I'm not gonna miss either which one of these motherfuckers. So I dash over to where everybody's running to, only to see this massive fucking crowd of people. And it's not just one of those tight knit circles, you know what I mean? Like when you know it's a fight and it's just a bunch of people in a big circle. These people have the whole fucking street blocked off. Like this is that monumental of a fucking event. I push my way through the crowd only to see in the middle, it's Chris, Rondrell, Smoke. And Smoke's older fucking brother. Now, Smoke's older brother was bigger than Smoke. The motherfucker was buffer than Smoke. But the thing was, his older brother was a really, really good football player. The dude was so dedicated to football, I would not put it past him to be in the NFL right now. I, I just haven't followed up with the guy. But with that being said, because of all of his football training, he's not into everything that his family's into. He doesn't do drugs, he doesn't sell drugs, he just goes to school and practices football and lifts weights all f***ing day. Just football and lifts weights. But he was there to have his brother's back. So on the other side was only fucking Chris. Just fucking Chris. Now the thing about Chris was, Chris was a skinny motherfucker. Like the dude was skinny as f***. He's Puerto Rican, curly hair, but he was tall. He was lanky. He's like six foot three, which is pretty big for a f***. 17 year old, you know what I mean? A lot of you may be asking, why is this one guy, Chris, going against basically all the toughest motherfuckers in the social game, right? Now, the thing about Chris is, since he was so fucking skinny, he has been getting into fights his whole fucking life. He's always lived in the hood, and the dude had heart like a motherfucker. He did not give a fuck. I've seen a couple of situations with Chris where this motherfucker was willing to die. Legitimately, there's a it's a different BHD story time, but I saw this guy get into a knife fight with another guy after school, and Chris didn't have a knife. Only the other dude did, and he still won the fight, man. After that, dog, I'm not gonna lie, I was scared of Chris. That's why I didn't hit him as girl. I was not about the life of fucking with his. Shit. <laughs> that dude was such a badass. <laughs> so. So, Chris, man, I have never seen this dude back down from shit. I'm pretty sure in that knife fight situation, the dude could have had a gun. And Chris still would have tried to throw hands on him, even though he didn't have a weapon. That's how crazy this motherfucker was, man. He was the embodiment of fucking yellow. He was the model. <laughs> oh, every day. So, I haven't told you guys a lot about Rondrell. Rondrell was like, second in command of the socials. The thing with Rondrell was, he was short, right? He was like my size in height, but he was skinny as a fucking twig. The thing about Rondrell was, he was 100% YOLO too. He was YOLO in the sense as to where if you tried to fight him and he felt like he was gonna lose, he would just plain shoot you. Just, just straight up fucking murder you. It was cool. He was just straight kill you. He, This dude always drove a fucking stolen car. He sold drugs and he was just the most unethical drug dealer I've ever met in my goddamn life. Wait till I tell you some of the stories about this motherfucker. He's such a terrible person. He's such a terrible drug dealer. Now, this dude Rondro, he had a big fucking mouth, right? And he was willing to get down. Smoke's group starts walking towards Chris. Chris starts walking towards Smoke's group. And no one's fucking saying shit. Like, no words was exchanged. Usually there's a whole bunch of yelling and screaming and some shit. There was none of that. Motherfuckers is just walking at each other. And I'm like, shit. And this is about to go down. Nigga, we need popcorn and lawn chairs. Because shit's about to get real as fuck. <laughs> so, the first person up is Rondrell. 
Ron Drill runs at f***ing Chris as they connect. Chris hits this nigga so hard. I can't put into words how hard he got. Have you ever seen someone get hit so hard that, that their f***ing face and neck spin so fast that their body does? Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, unfortunately, I have to cut it short because... If it ran on super duper longer, then it'd be like another two weeks before it came out. And I want to get you guys this first half now. Uh, stay tuned for the next half, which should be out in about two weeks.